and we now turn from the newest scientific findings to industrial practice um, and welcome here on stage an expert live on this side. He is head of Department of Resource uh, Policy at the Austrian Pulp and Paper Industry Association. He will join us live uh, with his presentation to the forest fiber industry, sustainable and circular. Please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Hans Grieshofer. Um, in the words of Monty Python, uh, and now something completely different, um, don't worry, I won't sing the song uh, from the Lumberjacker song, uh, but my aim is to give you an insight to the timber and uh, paper industry. And uh, thank you first um, for the kind uh, introduction. Uh, I'm very happy to have you as my audience and it's a great pleasure and honor for me to be a part of the Quitsta Trico um, Forest uh, Campus and uh, first many thanks to uh, Professor Simat and her insights how trees talk to each other. Um, from my point of view it's absolutely necessary to have a healthy biodiversity uh, and a high variety of tree species and uh, trees in different ages. We have in Austria or in German the term Blenderwald Bewirtschaftung. I think this is a little bit sim similar and uh, we need this, this, this kind of uh, forest management. And in times of climate change, a high demand and a high demand for, for, for wood product, uh, it is important to manage our forest in a sustainably and in a careful way. So, I want to show you um, in the next half an hour um, some facts and figures uh, about the pulp and paper industry in Europe and in, in Austria. Um, then, uh, uh, something about the timber availability and is there enough wood or is there enough for everyone? and something about the bioeconomy and the short video and finally some conclusions. Okay, uh, thanks, you. thanks to Andreas for the kind introduction, uh, so I can uh, skip this slide. Uh, uh, we heard everything, uh, uh, the main topics of, of my uh, curriculum vita. Yeah, uh, to the begin, uh, I would like to emphasize um, the, the special importance of the timber sector of Austria. Uh, the entire wood value chain is extremely export orientated. In the timber industry, almost uh, 90% of the products are exported. And in total, it means uh, a foreign trade surplus for 4 billion uh, euros per year. Uh, for the entire uh, sector. And as you can see, uh, sorry, as you can see, uh, this part is, uh, is the paper import uh, industry, and these products account for, a la for the large share, for the largest share of the export surplus. Uh, a tree offers a wide uh, variety of products. To optimize and to use its full potential, all parts of the tree must be used efficiently. Uh, since timber considered uh, CO2 neutral, there's much competition to use timber rather than fossil uh, products. Timber makes the most significant contribution to substitute uh, fossil carbon. Let's, let's take a look uh, to Europe and the importance of the uh, importance of the timber and the pulp production in in Europe. Um, this is a chart, a slide from the CEPI. CEPI is uh, the confederation of the European uh, paper industry. Approximately uh, 900 mills uh, across Europe, about 180 employees uh, employed directly, and in 18 member countries 
uh, are, are in CP. And on the on the on the left chart, you can see the total paperboard production reach reaches about 90 million tons per year, and uh, the packaging sector. Uh, this is the is the sorry. This is the the light blue line, um, and the packaging sector has more than doubled in the last 30 years. Uh, a great thank to Amazon and IKEA. Uh, and you can also see the, the, the line from the, the graphic, graphic paper, uh, which has almost uh, halved since, 2000, uh, since 2005. At, and at almost 40% 40 um, 40 of the uh, packaging paper accounts for the majority of the, of the paper grades. So now looking um, to Austria, uh, Austro Papier is the association of the Austrian uh, pulp and paper uh, industry. Um, we have uh, um, 23 mills, 5 billion tons paper production per year, and 2 million tons pulp um, uh, production, and 4 billion euros turnover, and 8,000 approximately 8,000 employees. And as you can see here. Uh, this year we celebrated our 105th uh, birthday and yeah, it was a very nice uh, event um, to have uh, an association as, as long as this time. For the pulp and paper industry, timber is the, is the main raw materials. Uh, 8 million cubic meters are processed every year and uh, the timber is used both from harvested logs in course of sustainable forest management and wood chips from the sawmills. 50% uh, is uh, from the sawmills and 50% from, from the forests. And altogether, 74% uh, of the timber is coming from regional sources in Austria and uh, the, rest, the rest of the timber comes from the border countries uh, close to our mills. And all timber uh, obtained by the Austrian pulp and paper industry comes from certified sustainable managed forest and in Austria these are uh, close 100% or the 99% PFC, uh, PFC certified. Now some, uh, some, some charts about the timber availability in Europe and in Austria. Um, and the following slides refer to the availability to the timber of, 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 uh, to, to the ti of timber in, in Europe, and 40 percent of the total European land mass is forest. The, the annual increase in forest is significantly higher than the annual harvesting, and the stock of forest increases by 160 million cubic meter of timber every year in Europe. Um, the forest stock and growth in Austria is even larger. Um, just under half of Austrian's national territory is covered with forests and, and amounts of about 4 million uh, hectares. And uh, the yearly uh, increase about 4,000 hectares per year. Here you can see uh, the development of the past uh, 60 years, whereby the, the timber stock has almost, um, sorry, has almost doubled in this in this period, and the total the total timber stock is uh, thus over 1.2 uh, billion cubic meters, uh, with an average stock per hectare of 351 cubic meter per hectare. In relation to to Sweden and to Finland. This is significantly higher. Uh, this slide shows uh, the composition of the tree species in uh, Austria. The all dominated tree species is spruce with almost 50% of the total area. And the pure uh, broadleaf wood is found in about a quarter of the national uh, territory. 
Yes, and uh, here you can see um, the cascading stages of uh, the timber use in a not very, in a not really user-friendly chart. Uh, it is used to confuse everybody, um, but but in short in short words. Uh, on the left side, you can see here the, the input of, of wood from imports and domestic wood. And uh, uh, inside, there are the sawmills, the activities of sawmills, uh, paper industry, panel industry. And, and then on the, in the right side, you can see uh, wood for the energy production. This is, uh, this is the, the, the chart for the energy production pathways. And uh, you can see here the, the uh, uh, black liquor. It's uh, um, a product from the pulp and paper industry. And here also the, the heating, also the, the CHP uh, combined uh, heating and uh, uh, electricity uh, uh, systems. And these are, these are the volumes for firewood uh, in, in, in households and in firewood in, in, this, in this case. So, and in this chart, um, I condense the version, the, 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 the charts, the previous charts, and I think it, it, it is important to see um, the origin of the wood here, also the domestic wood, the imports, uh, and, and these are wood from, from, from regions that are not, not forest per law. And here you can see uh, the, the use, the usage of timber in the material use and the energy use. And here you can see the relation between uh, these two uh, uh, uses. And Austria is, about, is uh, here we can see uh, very dramatically uh, that uh, Austria is a front runner in, in energy use, in, in renewable energy use. Yes, and the pulp and paper industry has a long history uh, of sustainability. In, in Austria, uh, the sector has invested more than 1 billion uh, euros over the last decades in reducing emissions, rising energy efficiency and becoming uh, the leader industry sector of sustainability. Uh, one effect of the engagement is that the pulp and paper industry become the biggest industrial provider uh, for renewable energy. 60% um, of energy comes from renewable sources in Austria, especially product, uh, pro pro uh, production re residues such as black liquor, uh, bark and sludges are used for energy recovery. Um, but 40% is gas from Russia. And uh, currently, all the activities are focused on reducing uh, this dependence uh, on, on Russian gas. And I think uh, hydrogen and biomass would be a solution, but, but not earlier than uh, five to, to 10 years. Yeah. The, the last slide uh, of timber availability um, uh, shows us the influence of the, of the European um, politics. The EU Green Deal sets the goal of making Europe the first climate neutral continent by 2050. And this is one of the greatest challenges in the last decades. Um, to reach these ambitious, ambitious um, climate targets, there are many individual goals set in different areas. Um, you can see here the, the, the goals, uh, the climate targets for 2030. There are a lot of strategies, the biodiversity strategy, EU forest strategies, there's a lot of things. Um, and many of these goals affecting, and that is the important thing, and many of these goals affecting the availability of timber, mainly <coughs> in, in no longer use of forests. Uh, sorry. And uh, to, 
I want to, to reflect to the original question. Um, I want to go back one slide. Um, to return to the original question, um, is there enough wood for everyone? Uh, I would like um, to answer this with yes, but uh, I want to mention three things. Uh, we need further technical development and increased efficiency in wood processing and facing the, the usage cascade. Further, we must increase felling volumes and optimize um, the timber volume per hectare. So more volume uh, in less area. There are already numerous re research activities dealing with uh, suitable tree species, genetics, and climate appropriate silver culture. The climate policy activities must not counteract sustainable forest management because forests and their products uh, are the key to decarbonization and finally, uh, and finally uh, to reach the climate goals. So, some, some words and facts to, to buyer economy. Climate change is uh, forcing us to rethink all of our processes and products. Our vision is by economy and economic activity producing bio-based goods, services or energy instead of fossil-based ones. The pulp and paper industry is, is the big, has a big potential of substituting fossil-based products. Already now we supply a big range of uh, bio-based products, you can see that here, such as uh, viscose from textiles, packaging made from paper instead of uh, plastics, biocomposites and food ad additives and green energy. Mm. Here you can see um, what we can do, what we can do uh, with uh, 100 kilograms of wood. And uh, uh, important is that we can do uh, in, in that way or in that way, uh, only to use so important is that we uh, make uh, a material use of wood and not directly uh, to burn it. And when you, you, you get the timber through the pulp and paper industry, you have all these products and finally also uh, you have electricity and energy. In this case, uh, for th uh, two weeks, um, it is uh, for a, a household for four peoples. But when you get it directly into energy and, and heating, you have only uh, 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 energy for four weeks. So the, the advantage is on this side uh, very high. <coughs> and finally, um, a few, words, a few words about um, um, the biorefineries. Uh, in Europe, an increasing number of pulp mills uh, are uh, turning into biorefineries. In Europe, a European study carried out by SEPI has identified 139 biorefineries in Europe, most of them 84% uh, based on the pulp process. And the products with the highest added value are textile fibers, uh, biofuels, and tall oil products. Tall oil, with, with tall oil products, you get you need it for, for paints uh, and varnishes. Most bio re, uh, most bio refineries are situate, situated in, in 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 the northern part of Europe, in, in Sweden, and in in, in Finland, uh, but also in you can find it in in Austria. And here uh, is an example for a biorefinery uh, in, in Austria. Um, and and the, the pathway from a paper mill uh, to a, a biorefinery mill. This is the, the mill in Hallein, is located in, in Salzburg. And uh, at the end of the 19th century, uh, they started the paper production. And also bioethanol was produced for the first time as early as uh, in the 1941. And 2006, uh, they started the biomass production in a combined heating and power system um, here. And then in 2009, they stopped the paper production. 
and, uh, and, and, try and trying to uh, uh, the production of textile fiber. And uh, in, in 2000, uh, the last year, 2021, uh, they started the large-scale bioethanol uh, production uh, for the OMV. This is the Austrian Mineral uh, Oil Company. And uh, here you can see the three production paths um, from, from biorefinery uh, the, with the three components, cellulose, hemocellulose, and lignin. And uh, from, from cellulose, uh, you get, um, you get uh, dissolving bulb and high, quality, uh, and high quality textile fibers. And from he hemocellulose, you get the bioethanol process and lignin. Uh, finally, lignin, um, you can, uh, you can, uh, um, you, you get the, the green energy, and uh, um, there are rather there are more activities in this field. But here you can see um, the main uh, path of of uh, biorefineries. Yes, and now uh, enjoy a short video, please. Green, green, uh, green Source is a cooperation of the European pulp paper and packaging industry, and they uh, produce this this video. So, and now to the finish, uh, uh, a few take-home messages. Um, there is an increasing uh, demand of bio-based products. While climate change is impacting the availability of timber, um, uh, this is a result. Th th that, that, con that may be a potential, a high potential of conflict, but uh, um, the industry, a part of the industry, the pulp and paper industry is a part of the solution. Um, the industry is producing a wide range of bio-based products and green en energy for out of timber. And in Austria, uh, approximately 10% of the overall re renewable energy is produced uh, and provided by the pulp and paper industry. And uh, the industry still has still potential uh, for new uh, bio-based products out of uh, timber to substitute fossil-based products. I think this is one of the important uh, uh, things for our, our working in, in, in the future. 
and to ensure the, the availability of timber for, for future generation, we must increase felling volumes, optimize the timber volume per hectare, as well as uh, consistent uh, cascading use. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hans. Now uh, it's time for your questions. Any questions? I have, I have several. You don't. Oh, I, here, Ronald. Yeah. No, thank you very much, Mr. Christman. I mean, for me, it was one Light. of these enlightening moments or so, like where I really learned something new. And the, what I learned today is that, you know, when we talk about uh, fixing carbon, it's not only about reforestation and planting more mm -hmm. trees, but simply it's more about using yeah. wood as well as a raw yeah. material, what you pointed out instead of concrete. Yeah. In light of the, the current energy crisis and hikes like we are facing, yeah, do you see like already a change like in, in the industry or in policymakers to address this, this, this more intense use of our forest and not only about reforestation? Um, yeah, thank you for the question and um, for the good st uh, statement. Um, yes, uh, carbon fixing in, 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 in products, that is for us, for the whole timber industry, one of the uh, important things for the panel industry, for the sawmills. And uh, uh, also carbon is fixed out, out in, in, in the forests, but only this way is, is not a good way. As of, of our point of view, and we need we need the products uh, f out of timber. And uh, I think I think the politics. Yeah, I hope uh, they are on, on on a good way, and and they see our solutions and they see our work in 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 this field. Okay, don't don't we need products that last? If we you have some packages, it's yeah, it's we throw it away after usage. Yeah, after usage, there comes the recycling process. Okay, and, uh, so it stays in uh, recycling, recycle, recycle uh, reuse, recycling. Uh, th this is very important, and we in the paper industry also um, um, have uh, about two and a half million recycled paper in our process mm -hmm. to to recycle that in 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 and pro on, on produce uh, especially more. Um, uh, packaging uh, products out of recycled paper. Mm -hmm. This is very important. And Austria, especially Austria, have a recycling rate over uh, close to 75 percent. It's very high, uh, and we all do that. We mm -hmm. we, we recycle the paper, we recycle glass uh, bottles, and it also plastic. But here in in plastic, the, there is. Um, one of the great challenges in, in, in future to bring out the plastic um, from the nature and in, in recycling systems. Okay, okay, any questions? Hey, I, I have several questions. Uh, do you really think, uh, this is a critical one, yeah? Oui. <laughs> it's gonna hurt. Uh, do you really think our forest can fulfill our need, all, all, all the needs? Everyone wants something from the forest. Uh, Yes, but I, 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 I tried to, to, to bring that in my presentation, but, um, but we, we have to be very uh, consequent. Yeah? We have to do it in a consequent way. Um, recycling is one thing, and the cascading use is, is, is very important. Uh, to, to use the timber pr uh, first in a, in a material way, and then you, you can burn it. That is very, very, very important. Because uh, in, uh, in this situation we are now, uh, with the dependence on the Russian uh, gas, everyone uh, wants wants to 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 heat the timber, or to, to to need timber for for heating for electricity, and I think that this uh, a dangerous way, um, because we have we have more renewable uh, materials, not only. Uh, biomass, we have wind, we have water, photovoltaic and uh, geothermy. I think uh, we have thinking all these, it, all these uh, solutions. Okay, you also were talking about, ah, there's a question. Hello, my name is Anders Ekstrand and I work for the for Södra, the South Swedish forest owners. Okay. Uh, you have a very high stock, which means that you store a lot of carbon. But the annual growth seems quite moderate. Do you have any program to increase the annual growth? Because then you will take away even more carbon from the atmosphere. 
um, uh, yes, um, I think it would be also a good question to my colleague uh, Dr. Meyer from our research center. Um, maybe tomorrow we, we, we will okay. talk about that. Um, but, uh, but more harvesting uh, would be very important for all parts of the, of, of the, uh, of the from, from the landowners uh, to, to, to the whole, uh, um, the, the whole uh, um, um, chain of, of, of wood and forest uh, would be happy about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have in Austria a very, maybe one thing is important, we have in Austria a very, uh, small scaled scaled uh, uh, infrastructure, a, st a structure from landowners. We have 200,000 landowners. Uh, they uh, and in average they have 20 hectare per owner. So this is very very small. And uh, for example, um, a, a paper mill in in Austria have 300 to 500 uh, wood suppliers. So this is also very challenging in, 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 in working and uh, in contracting, etc. Yeah. But speaking of growth, maybe uh, Peter Meyer can answer this question from Sweden. <laughs> Thank you very much. Peter Meyer, I'm the director of the Austrian Research Center for Forest. You'll hear more from me tomorrow. So, so Hans was quoting quite some figures that, that we were producing and uh, on, on the question of uh, the my pleasure. <laughs> on on uh, the, the, the growth of, of, of uh, forests in Austria, obviously there's a high volume that, 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 that we're producing and uh, what we see is that of course the tendency is uh, slowing down a little bit uh, in the growth rate and that has to do also with the age distribution of our forests in Austria. Um, so there's uh, a certain limit on how we uh, can combine the, the harvest and the growth of our trees. And that's what you see in the, in the, in the aggregation of, of the volume overall. It's 1.2 billion, as, as Hans has just said. But uh, um, it has had an immense increase over the last 50, 70 years. But again, uh, there's no um, indefinite uh, growth of, of, of our trees. But I would like, I mean, I, I would have so many questions, Andreas, but, but I think that would kind of, um, uh, in a way, overburden this type of, of, of meeting. But um, um, I think what is important also with, with uh, what Susan um, was also referring to, uh, with uh, forests and the use of timber. And I um, mean, our, our, our research shows that um, trees uh, grow the best when they are 40 to 60 years old. So that's where they have the highest mm -hmm. growth. That's where the, the intake of carbon is the highest. This is a quite interesting fact. So old trees, I mean, despite all the facts about the mother tree and the biodiversity, and I think that's all clear, it shows that there's, it's, it's like a curve. When you're 60 years old, that's the maximum of amount of carbon that you can build into a tree. And it's going down when they're getting older. So when you only th look at the trees from a carbon perspective, um, you would then be better uh, harvest them and build long-lasting products. Because then you have a second. And, and, mm. and Andreas, you were saying that also in, in your book, and also <laughs> our research shows that, that no, no, but that, that, that this is... Uh, an extra storage for the carbon and for that, that we all want, in addition to growing trees. But then, of course, you have the other interests with biodiversity, with, with other uses. So I think that's always the trade-offs. And I will talk about that a little bit tomorrow, that we all look into when we have so many different interests in our trees and forests. But it's, mm -hmm. it's very important to always uh, con consider these, these, these various aspects and how that use of trees and timber is one of the solutions. Uh, just one sentence uh, in addition. It, it's we, the most important thing we need to do in climate change is to reduce CO2. So we should not give the impression that growing trees and uh, growing of, and, and, and uh, all of that is solving all our consumption problems. So I think it's very important always to, to know that, of course, we are buying time by um, storing carbon, and uh, it's good to have a renewable material and to use it, but we also need to think about the way we operate as consumers and, and as, as societies so that we do not think that, oh, the trees and the forests will solve all our problems and will not have yeah. any problems anymore because also forests um, over some time may turn into sources of carbon because of the age distribution, but it's a separate discussion and I'll stop here. <laughs> uh, sp speaking of young trees, uh, what I've learned, please correct me if I'm wrong, what I've learned from, from Susan Simar is that uh, uh, old 
an old forest is more resilient and that's very important because if it starts, if a fire starts, then all of a sudden all of, of the CO2 is in the air. So maybe it's good to have old trees. Old trees. Or is this just a too simple assumption? Please, Peter, you're the person. <laughs> I'm, I'm just... Andreas and I were now starting a private conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, Hans, you're, you're invited in that conversation, yeah? of course, as well. And all of you. Um, no, of course, uh, it's, a, it's again a big, big issue about uh, the mixture of, of age classes and, and also tree species. And I think that that's also what, what, what we all, our research shows, that you need mix, mixed uh, stands for the future because you also want to mitigate the risk that you're having as a, as a forest owner. And also the vitality of, of forests in the changing climate is increasing when you have mixed stands and also different age classes. And I mean, Hans was hinting at that, that in Central Europe, we have a long tradition because of our industrial history in how to manage yeah. uh, forests uh, sustainably. And so we have different systems that mimic a little bit the idea that Susan was presenting with the, with the mother tree, um, that we only have selected trees taken out of the forests versus clear cuts. Plus, in many countries, like here in Austria, the size of clear cuts is very limited. It's only two hectares maximum that you're allowed to cut at once. That's very different to North America and Canada. So what we've seen here, you would not be able to see here in Austria. So it's very, very or different even, even. because of our history. Mm. And, and so, so again, it's, you always have to see the differences um, in worldwide. And by the way, I mean, the biggest problem that we're having is in the tropics. Uh, that's where we really lose biodiversity and trees. And uh, so we all see the news and are influenced by these news. Uh, so, so that is really where we have to find ways of uh, reducing the deforestation. Mm -hmm. Only one sentence from my side. You don't have to forget in Sweden that uh, climate change is increasing if you go to the north. And that's why two 2015 you had the first big uh, wildfire no in northern part of, uh, of Stockholm. Is it true? So you didn't know this before. You didn't have this before in, in history. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Okay. Okay. You think so? Okay. Uh, uh, you know it? <laughs> What's your profession? Okay. Thank you. Okay, another question. I, uh, I, want, I want to add I'm something out of the game. Uh, re regarding um, the, the nature conversation. Uh, uh, conservation, because there is always a difference between an integrated and a segregative uh, nature conservation. Um, segregated need, uh, um, there is a separation of protected, uh, uh, protected areas and usable areas. Yeah. And we in Austria and in all in some countries in Europe, we have the int integration of, of all the the function of, of the forests and. This is also a little bit different to other parts in, in the world and uh, because we have the function of the utility function, the conservation function, the recreational function, and these all of one, one area and, and not uh, in special or in, 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 in separation areas. Okay, I have to... We, do we still have time? We're, okay, another question from Catalina. Uh, maybe we have the microphone in the front row. We get the microphone. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm a little bit mean now because I'm posing a question to the audi audience, especially to the Swedish, as you <laughs> pointed out the higher growth rates you are having in Sweden than in other parts of s Central Europe, for example. So what is, in your opinion, the reason why you achieve so high um, growth rates in Sweden? Uh, I think the professor mainly answered that question. It is the age distribution mm -hmm. only. Uh, trees grow. Uh, if you look at them as an ecosystem, they will grow in, in like a curve. And we have a lot of forest on the top of the curve, which means that, that the annual growth will be high. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I, ha I have to... Okay. Okay. If you... Uh, Mr. Sire wants to say something. It's... It, this time a short question. Okay, I'm from the first uh, presentation. I clearly heard uh, a solution for or a, a strategy for climate change is kind of using forests as carbon sinks, including soils. 
Um, and what I hear from the industry is using forest, using cutting more, increasing the cut of trees. And I first question is maybe how you deal with this contradiction. And what I would like to hear in this conference, I heard it's about listening and learning and exchanging. I would rather hear a kind of position, let's use more timber, rather than let's find a new balance or a better solution and the contribution of science or foresters and of industry in that regard. Um, yes, uh, uh, we we need more felling volumes because there's 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 an increasing need on forest and wood and timber and timber products. I think this is uh, all over the world the the, the same situation and uh, and we and our stati statistics shows us that we have a, a high uh, stock and uh, and in one way that was. Uh, I think I could uh, show in a good way the the industry does many things to be efficient uh, to to go in a cascading way <coughs> and I think these are the the, the 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 solutions for for the future yeah mm -hmm. and we in Austria PFC certified uh, in the forests yeah that's a difficult question yeah. <laughs> because we need biodiversity and we need yeah, biodiversity yeah but we never had in history yeah. as much wood as we have forest as, as we have now is yeah. it true i think so yeah that's what i what i think yeah okay of course why not ask the professor uh, yeah, I, yeah i just became a professor i realized <laughs> so thanks very much <laughs> <laughs> that's the immediate effect of this conference no i'm kidding um, no, I think I mean it's, it's of course a very important question on how to balance all these different interests. And um, the, I mean in Europe, also North America, in most parts of the world, we have um, we cut less than than, than than trees grow, so it's still within the limits of sustainability. Again, the biggest problem is the tropics. I mean you know that, and and so it's it's Africa, Asia, and that's really where we have to to change things, and and that has to do yeah. again with our consumption levels and and modes. But so there, there is some, some so, so Austria is 89% that we use, so it's still 11%. So that's why our forests and trees get more. And that's true for, for most uh, of the European countries. So there is some, 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 some post potential also for even uh, when you talk about the energy crisis or, or the use for the new Bauhaus, you know, this initiative of the European Union. To, to use uh, forests and trees uh, without having a bad conscience about doing that because we use a renewable material. But uh, again, the different other interests of uh, recreation, of health in forests, of uh, that we want, we want to walk and hike and also the biodiversity are things that we have to consider and balance in a multi-functional way. And that's one of the big differences to what Hans has also has said about the mm -hmm. segregation. Yeah. That there are parts of the world where you segregate these things to say, well, here we protect and here we use. And we have, again, because of our cultural history in Europe, uh, the system of trying to combine all these aspects in the forest. And that's why they look as, uh, as they are. And also used for tur tourism here in Kitzbühel. As you all know, it's, it's, of course, also famous for its landscape. And that also has to do how the forests are treated in this integrated way. So I think we won't solve this question uh, <laughs> right now. Um, if you're okay, I, I want to wind up this discussion and I think we, we have a dinner and, and we can discuss more later on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Hans you. Hans Grieshofer, big applause.